Hi, my name's Nick Jeffries, and you're watching New Weekly, episode 20. Callum Best has asked me if I would be interested in sponsoring the ladies' team. And I'm back around Chesham Road in Kensington. Uh, we're meeting the architect stroke interior design around here. 1,000 square feet, and it is in Fulham and the resale value is £1,000 a square foot, that's gonna add one million pounds to the resale value. They have got to be taken out very carefully, along with the shutters. They need to be sent off to a specialist to get restored and refurbished. That takes time and a lot of money. So I'm in Montpellier Street this morning, visiting the new projects which should be coming Newsway next week. So this afternoon I am at Dorking Wanderers with my mate Callum Best who's the chairman of the ladies team and they are going to be playing uh, at home today, I think it'll be Brentwood possibly. Uh, he's currently over there pre-warm up with the team and uh, oh here he is, he's coming over here now, Look, there he is, there's the gang, just been over here, uh, let's have a chat. Tuesday morning and I'm just on the way to pick up Bradley to head over to Garrett Lane which is the joint venture opportunity we're working on and um, it should take me about five minutes to get there but I didn't post anything yesterday on Monday because I worked from home and I had probably 300 emails to get through uh, so I apologize for that Zoltan was in the office but he was just going over some social media posts and uh, you know working with Claudia on sort of 15 second 30 second and one minute videos for uh, Instagram Facebook and uh, LinkedIn but um, at the weekend Sunday I went over to Dorking to watch Dorking Wanderers ladies football team play because Callum Best has asked me if I would be interested in sponsoring the ladies team. Well, I've never watched ladies football and I've never been to Dorking Wanderers Football Club. So I headed over there and uh, it was a pretty cold and windy afternoon, but the grounds were amazing. AstroTurf, uh, you've got two stadiums, you've got the clubhouse where you can sit down and have glasses of wine, beer, teas, coffees, snacks. So the whole afternoon was really pleasant and they won 5-2 in the end against Brentford. And um, so it looks pretty pop promising. I am super interested. We're just going over the finer details, crossing the T's and dotting the I's on the um, on the finance side of things. But um, it'll be good coverage. And the reason why I'm interested is because BBC are filming seven episodes of 
progress of the team throughout the season. Now, because of Callum's social media presence and his celebrity, it puts a lot of eyeballs on the club. So this is why new are interested in investing hard cash into the club because we will be involved in the episodes. When I went there on Sunday, there was a camera crew there and they did a bit of filming with me talking about the opportunity, how do I know Callum, have I ever been to a ladies football club, what, what, why am I interested in uh, uh, putting uh, you know, money into the club. Um, so they've already done a bit of filming and um, they should be coming into the office this week sometime to do a bit of shooting uh, in the office. But uh, I spoke to Callum this morning and uh, obviously they're super keen to get a deal done. If a deal can't be done this week, then they'll probably go to another company to talk to. But um, the money's for investing into bringing new talent to the club. So I understand the pressure's on. And uh, I said, look, give me a few days and um, hopefully I have some good news. So yeah, just, um, where are we now? Uh, Hurlingham Club is just here. Bradley just lives somewhere along here. So we're gonna pick him up and they're gonna head over. Um, I will take some vid when I am there. So I'm on Garrett Lane with Bradley and the agent. So we're gonna pop inside to take a look at the commercial and the three units above. Welcome in my car. Excuse me, what are you doing? That's how I roll. <laughs> We've got our first dog. We live down in Devon and um, we don't have to. We had the first uh, sports, uh, BMW Sports Coupe. And um, of course it's two doors, isn't it? So we moved out to Devon and sort of, it's not going to be any good down here. And it's a very good dog. So the first thing we did was we, um, well, we had a matter of about three days, traded it in and bought a, a Jeep. <laughs> what, what Jeep? What, Grand Cherokee or something? Yeah, Junker, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that. It's a nice car, that's When those Grand Cherokees first came out, yeah. They were the best selling. They were really. even before yeah. they, the word SUV came yeah, out. It. Yeah, it was. They actually, were yeah. the best selling motors. I, I, it was that and the X5 when they first come out. Yeah. Would you have like an Overland or something? Uh, uh, it was, it was uh, like that. ORD, wasn't it? It was, it was one of the top. They had everything on them, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. You'd have to pay for anything extra. 
No. Well, you're heavy on the old fuel. Well, because it it's, it's a common diesel, mm. um, common rail diesel yeah. engine, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what I did? I bought one brand new, it was on a 53 plate. Yeah, and I thought, I thought I was clever. Right. So I put some red diesel in there. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! And you know what happened? Because the red diesel had a high amount of water content, I put it in the motor, it was like two days old, and the engine just stopped. I think I got to bloody tell the uh, garage. I was like, what happened to do with me? It just went like that. I did it, you hear? And I'm glad. Glad, I tell you! Can you imagine if we're winning 80% of the jobs? We'd be, what, you'd be in dire straits because you wouldn't be able to uh, uh, handle and, and, and get all the, the subbies to do the work. That feels like one of those good problems to have though. A magnificent one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, I would never sort of turn away, you know, if we can- Schedule them in. Schedule five, six, seven hundred thousand pound projects, mm. you know, starting one every two weeks or something. Yeah, exactly. I don't mind that. So just at Chesham Road for the first day of stripping out. So let's go and have a little wander around. Morning everyone, it is Wednesday and I'm back around Chesham Road in Kensington. Uh, we're meeting the architect stroke interior design around here. Now the property's stripped out, we can have a good look at where the problems are and what extras we can see already because there's lots of damp coming through the walls, which when the client had all his pictures, on the walls you couldn't see the issue so we're going to walk around we're going to put some post-it notes on the areas and um, then we can put a price to the extras um, which we can put forward to the client but as you see this is the kitchen all going I th to be fair i think the units are staying and we're going to be putting new doors on the on the units but um that may change as things usually do um but yeah so this is uh chesham road as you see it's already got the mansard up the top so is that one that one hasn't and that one hasn't so um as you see, people have already started to add the extensions. Apparently these houses are going for 1.4 million per property. What do you think? So up there you've got um, North End Road. That goes down to Fulham. That one goes up to Earl's Court. So one of the questions what keeps popping up is, why build a basement under your house in London. Well, here's three reasons why people choose to build a basement under their house in London. It adds massive amounts of value to your property because don't forget every pound per square foot you're going to add is increasing the value. So if a basement is 1000 square feet, and it is in Fulham, and the resale value is £1,000 a square foot, that's gonna add one million pounds to the resale value. It's not rocket science, is it? You know, so the more square footage you add underground, the better it is for the resale value. Again, it goes back to square footage. 
you may be interested in adding a basement for living area, games room, swimming pool, that's if it's a big property, utility room, bedrooms, whatever your requirements are, a basement is the ultimate way to add square footage to your property. What kind of rooms do you add in your basement? Well, I've, I've briefly gone over it. You know, depending on where you live, you may live in a terraced house in Fulham where you don't want to move, but you want to increase the square footage because you need an extra bedroom with an ensuite. Maybe a basement just under the front part of the house so it's a half basement, would be enough for you and your family. Maybe you live in South Kensington and the house is a little bit bigger and you want a basement because you want a cinema room or a gym or a sauna. Well, a basement is a fantastic way to increase the square footage for those items. Or maybe you live in Holland Park and you can go down under the garden and have a basement under the footprint and the width of the garden to have a swim pool, a spa, a gym, a games room, all the luxuries. Some people even have garages so you can drive the car onto the sort of movable plate and the plate takes the car down to the lower ground floor and then it stacks it in the basement. So those are three reasons why people have basements under their house. And it all depends the budget as well. Basements don't really work outside of London because the resale values of properties, for instance, in Portsmouth, where I come from, you know, a terraced house in Portsmouth is 250K, 300K. Well, a basement is gonna cost you 300 grand to do, so it just doesn't stack up. But if you're doing a basement under a London property, where the pound per square foot is 800 pound a square foot, 1,000, 1,200, 2,000, 3,000 pound a square foot, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because every square foot you're gonna to add to your property is gonna increase the square footage and the value. So it's Thursday morning. We've just come out of the meeting with the client from the Knightsbridge project and it is looking really promising. We've got to iron out a few numbers because on some items we're higher than what he wants to pay, i.e. internal doors and um, what else was there? windows as well we've got a quite a high price in there for renovating the existing windows because they are massive floor to ceiling sash windows we can't replace because it's a grade 2 listed building so they have got to be taken out very carefully along with the shutters they need to be sent off to a specialist to get restored and refurbished that takes time and a lot of money so um, the budget for the windows, I think they were about 50K. There's not many windows, but it's gonna take at least one man two or three weeks to do one window. So it is what it is. If the guy wants to get maximum resale value on the property, which is looking to go on the market in around October, November for 7 million quid, it has got to be done properly. 
That means no corners cut at all. Uh, and that is why he's come to New, because he knows we are number one in West London for doing projects like this. Um, so yeah, that's a positive start to the day. Um, we've just got the numbers back for the site in Chigwell off the estimator. Again, that's coming in a little bit higher than what we expected. But guess what? Again, it's 10,000 square feet of new build house. It's gonna be expensive. The client has exchanged. So now it's a question of managing expectations because I think they thought the price was gonna be a little bit lower. And it's coming in around about, well, I won't actually say at the moment till we want it, but it's quite a bit of money. Um, so I'm just heading back to the office now. So let's have a catch up maybe uh, when I get back. So I'm in Montpellier Street this morning, visiting the new project, which should be coming news way next week. We're gonna do a little site visit and um, gonna be meeting one of the subcontractors down there. We've got Will on site and we've got Gab Guy on site as well. So let's go in and have a little look at this fantastic property. Got, yeah, I've got the spreadsheet, yeah. Right, I've been rejigging um, Bradley's numbers uh, because obviously we're supposed to exchange today and I just thought, let me just cross off all the T's and everything else and make sure that this whole thing works and I'm not getting it. So this is a difficult phone call we had from the investor and basically we were due to exchange contracts today on Garrett Lane, which is the two commercial with three units above each 
property. Um, unfortunately, the comparables which we got together from the estate agents didn't stack up. The estate agents we used overinflated the numbers, which meant it looked good on the spreadsheet, but in reality, the numbers just didn't work because the pound per square foot ended up being less than 700 pounds a square foot. So the return on the investment just wasn't there. Um, I said to the client, let's move on. Not worth sort of trying to make this one work, going back to the owners. We could put a cheeky low offer in, but the offer would have to be at least 150,000 pounds less per property. So let's move on and uh, find something else. So now you see we actually do joint ventures like in Garrett Lane, which has probably gone a bit pear shaped at the moment because of the resale values. We are looking for off market opportunities. So if you know someone or you have a opportunity in and around London, maybe it's on market, maybe it's off market, maybe it's got planning approval, maybe it doesn't have planning approval. We are interested, whether it be for a single unit, a house, an apartment, someone think somewhere we can add value through maybe adding a basement, loft conversion, side return or pod room, or maybe it could be a new build opportunity where we can demolish the existing property and build a new build house two new houses, 10 flats, 20 flats, it doesn't really matter. We can take care of the planning approval. We can take care of all the administration side of things. We can even take care of all the finance and everything like that. So if you have got anything, get in contact with us. 020-7731-6841 or email info at anyprojects.co. I can't believe we've hit our 20th episode on YouTube. If you do like the content, please hit the subscribe button, like and share. We'll see you all next week. Just